everybody, and thank you so much for spending some time with us today. My name is Coach Sandra, and uh, before we get started on today's topic, please go ahead and add your information in the comments. Uh, let us know where you served, what years you served, and uh, what branch of service you served in. And uh, welcome to Coach Naomi as well. Hey, Naomi. Um, she's going to also join us today. So again, welcome, welcome. Welcome, everyone. Please let us know where you're tuning in from, what branch and what years you serve, and we'll get started. Welcome, Joseph. How are you? Thank you for joining us today. Eight years, USAF, Air Force. Awesome. <laughs> awesome, awesome. We're gonna get started here soon. We're just gonna let more of our veterans join in. We just got started, so uh, just please bear with us just a little bit. And uh, we'll go ahead and, uh, and start today. So hello, Dennis. Yeah, Air Force, another Air Force, nice. Even Alex, Air Force, great. Ah, oh, Gucci, <laughs> I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Jess, welcome. Robert, welcome as well. And Jesus, yes. Nice and warm weather. <laughs> Orlando lives in Florida. Orlando. Welcome, Orlando. 32 years. Wow, 30 years, Tim. Andy Lopez, hello. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today. Nice to see you. Yes, sir, Coach. Oh, still in the fight for that 100, absolutely. Such an honor to work with you, Andy. Thanks for being here today. Now, this is nice. Look at all, all of Fran, Ronnie, Amy, welcome. Don, Max, James. This is great. Very important subject for sure today. For sure. And, uh, yes. So happy that you all are here. Thank you again for all your comments and welcome. And thank you. Um, for your service more than anything. Thank you, thank you. Again, my name is Sandra. I am a coach here at VA Claims Insider. I'm not a veteran. However, I can easily say that I thoroughly enjoyed and embraced uh, the living the military life. My father was a veteran. Uh, he served in the Air Force for 23 years. The experience of moving from place to place while I was growing up uh, provided me with exposure to different cultures, different traditions, uh, languages, and I am so grateful for that. Um, it also provided me with a great appreciation and understanding of what sacrifice and discipline veterans and their families endure throughout that uh, military service. So I've been here at VA Claims Insider for over three years. I am a coach uh, again here at VACI. Uh, and it has been an extreme great honor to help veterans get the disability rating that they deserve. Every day I get to do this job, it's it's just amazing. So again, welcome. And Naomi, go ahead and uh, introduce yourself as well. Yeah. Uh, welcome, everyone. I'm Coach Naomi. Um, similar to Sandra, I actually um, don't come from a military background. Um, I actually come back from a social work and legal background, have a lot of experience um, in therapy, of course, but also working with underrepresented groups. Um, and I have done some work as well with some vets. Um, I think, I like to think that I'm serving now, right? Uh, through my work here at VACI, um, it's really an honor to do, you know, life-changing work um, and getting the compensation that you guys deserve um, for sure. So I've been here, I would say under about a year now. It's crazy how time the, the time flies by, um, but, it's always a learning experience, always amazing, you know, time to be helping folks um, with their claims um, and just, you know, giving them the right pointers to resources and things here at VACI that really will help your claims process that much easier, that much efficient. 
Um, and yeah, and I, and I really, you know, love what we do. So thank you so much for tuning in with us. Um, you know, letting us know, um, any questions that you may have throughout the session. Um, we're, we're here to help here to give information, um, and, you know, guide you in the right direction for sure. Absolutely. Awesome. Awesome. So we're going to get started with our disclaimer first, and then we'll get into the uh, topic of the day. So our disclaimer is that we are not accredited agents. We are not VSOs, which are veteran service officers. We are not attorneys or any other entity recognized by the Department of uh, Veteran Affairs, the VA, and we are not affiliated with the VA in any way. VA Claims Insider is an education-based coaching and consulting company for disabled veterans exploring eligibility for increased VA disability benefits and who wish to learn more about that process. VA Claims Insider also connects veterans with vetted independent medical professionals in our preferred provider network for medical examinations and independent medical opinions, which we call IMOs, for a wide range of disability conditions. Awesome. Thank you so much for that, Sandra. Um, let's just start off talking about a little bit more about our elite program. What does that entail and kind of what we have to offer should you join in this program? Um, so similar to what Sandra said, right, we're all about coaching, consulting, and education here at VACI. Um, and the way that we do things a little bit differently is that we focus on SEM or strategy, education, and medical evidence. So we always want to make sure that, you know, we look at the big picture of your claims, um, you know, your claim journey up to now. What are you currently service connected for? What were those claims that you were denied in the past? What was missing, right? Is it missing evidence? Was there missing um, connection, right? And we fill those gaps. Um, so let's build a strategy. Are we going for direct service connection or are we going secondary? Um, and if so, let's educate you on the criteria for that specific condition. Let's look up the CFR. Let's look up what the VA is you know, really looking for in order to classify you under with those criteria. But also, right, um, let's look at the evidence and the records that you have. Um, hey, are you missing a nexus? Are you missing a diagnosis? Um, what are those next steps? And um, guiding you throughout that. We provide one-on-one -on -one coaching. So what does that look like? Um, you'll have access to us through our insider portal, which is a good resource um, for all uh, throughout your claim journey, not only through communication with your coach or your coaching team, I should say, which is your AA and also your coach, but also resources to um, things in your claim, whether that's a VA form, whether that's a guide that really uh, provides um, information as to what to expect. Um, you'll have that one-on-one -on -one coaching call with your coach where they'll look at your overall um, kind of file, right? What's going on? What are you currently service connected for? What is that condition that you want to connect? Um, it's build a strategy moving forward as to how we want to do that. We'll guide you preparing that claim, right? So gathering that evidence, um, making sure that everything's good to go. We will guide you there, um, you know, through that claim submission. So we as um, veteran coaches don't actually submit claims on your behalf, right? Because we are just peer coaching and consulting um, throughout this journey for you, but we'll provide you with the resources, education, the tools so that you can submit that claim successfully. Um, we can have you, you know, hop on a Zoom call with us, share your screen and we can guide you step by step. Um, but definitely it's a, a team effort, um, you know, throughout this claim journey for sure. Um, and then on, on, after you get that claim submitted, um, shifting our focus to CNP preparation, right? So what to expect for the CNP? Um, you know, um, what does a bad CMP look like? And if so, what are those steps? What are those resources that we have in place um, for you to go ahead and report that? So all that support throughout that CMP process for sure is something that is part of that elite program. Um, another really cool thing that I, I probably one of my favorite things as part of the elite program is that we have live classes via Zoom uh, three times a day throughout the week. Um, one in the morning, we have coffee with the coaches. It's a really lax, um, you know, environment you come in um, and just, you know, build community, learn from other vets that have been through this process, so celebrate wins, um, you know, just check in with one another. It's always a cool way to just learn from one another, um, you know, ask coaches questions that maybe you're not able to ask your coach during a call or just follow up on something. It's always an open environment. Um, the other, I would say we have preparation classes. So let's say you're going in for an evaluation for your mental health claim or let's say you're going in for that CNP, we have prep classes for those throughout the week as well. Um, so it's always a really cool way for you to get yourself um, in those classes, learn little nuggets, like we like to say from other coaches, um, pointers and tips um, that would really help you prepare for that CNP exam or um, the mental health exam, if that's what you're preparing for. Absolutely. And one of my favorite as well, resources that we do provide are those live Zoom 
uh, meetings or classes that we provide. CMP exam is compensation and pension exam for those that you do not know. We do use acronyms a lot, but CMP is compensation and pension exam when the uh, VA evaluates for that claim that you submitted as well. So if you want to learn more about all of this, what we're talking about, coaching and our company, you can always schedule a free discovery call. Uh, you can talk to one of our team members uh, and you can also just go to vaclaims.help help um, to get more information. If you want to reach out to um, VA Claims Insider, our organization, our website is vaclaimsinsider.com. And it would be great. And we would love to partner with uh, you on your VA claim journey. That's what we love to do here. So again, thanks for uh, being here today. Big topic uh, that we are going to start with right now. The month of June is PTSD Awareness Month. So the intention behind this effort is to raise awareness about issues related to PTSD or better known as post-traumatic stress disorder. Also reduce the stigma that surrounds mental health discussions and also to help ensure that those who are suffering receive the treatment that they deserve, right? So if you think you have PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, it's time to get the help that you absolutely deserve. Um, a suggestion to get started would be to start seeing your doctor, start talking to your doctor, to your psychologist, engage with them. This can be done either uh, through the VA if you're already engaged with the VA or your own personal doctor. So any medical evidence, any medical um, uh, provider, if you will. So get started with that to, to get started on the PTSD journey, if you will, if you need that help. Um, of course, this may require some uncomfortable conversations, um, but it's extremely important not to diminish what you're going through, right? So that they, they can understand. Uh, we know it takes a lot of courage here at VACI to seek help for PTSD. Just a little bit of a statistic here. According to the VA, uh, PTSD affects anywhere from 2 to 29% of veterans, uh, depending on the conflict that they were involved with. So, for example, 15% uh, 15 of veterans who participated in Iraqi freedom and enduring freedom have been diagnosed with PTSD compared to 5% of those veterans who were in Vietnam. So 29% versus 5%. So PTSD, um, which many people in general think, or even veterans think, um, that it is usually linked to combat, right? But however, that um, is not always true. Non-combat PTSD is also very common in veterans. So the question for you is, could you be suffering from PTSD without knowing it or getting the help that you need? If so, you're not alone. Too often veterans suffer in silence in the abyss of post-traumatic stress disorder. So here, as we begin, are five reasons why you may be missing the signs of PTSD. Go okay. ahead. Yeah, let's talk about the first one, right? So you didn't experience combat. Um, so oftentimes folks that didn't experience combat believe that, you know, um, just are under the general assumption that you could not possibly have PTSD regardless if you're experiencing mental health symptoms. However, right, the truth is that anyone who has experienced or witnessed a traumatic event, um, what the VA will re would reference as a stressor, is at risk for PTSD. Um, combat can certainly create stressors, um, but it's far from the only circumstance that can trigger PTSD symptoms. Um, other stressors that may include um, PTSD response would be something like being sexually assaulted or harassed, hazed, uh, physically assaulted, maybe losing a few fellow military members due to suicide, uh, maybe experiencing a car crash or an aircraft crash, just to name a few examples. Um, there are many triggers for PTSD for military members, and whether they occur in or out of combat, um, you know, it's as equally debilitating, it has an equally um, same effect, right, uh, to your psyche, to your mental health. Um, and the VA recognizes that both combat and non-combat PTSD will regard and will regard it um, in the equally um, in the equal level in terms of impact, right? So 
having combat PTSD is not anymore. It doesn't hold any more weight compared to non-combat. The VA will view it equally. Absolutely. And another reason uh, possibly is because you don't want to be weak, right? And that's very common. I hear this, you know, with my veterans a lot um, because, you know, when you're in service, of course, you're told to, you know, suck it up, move forward, be brave, um, be strong. You don't want to talk about it and you just move on. So you don't want to be weak, but the virtues um, of strength and bravery are highly valued in the military and rightfully so, and because they're uh, critical in battle. But is it weak to ask for help that you need? Is it weak to ask for that help? Um, is it weak to proactively identify a limitation and strive to move beyond it? How is it more respectable to save your buddy from danger on the battlefield than to save yourself and your loved ones from the detrimental effects of post-traumatic stress disorder. So the stigma surrounding mental health conditions is illogical and unproductive and could be keeping you from recognizing and getting the help and the VA benefits uh, for your PTSD. Yeah. Um, another um, reason why folks may think PTSD does not apply to them is that perhaps you don't have any symptoms after the traumatic event. Um, while many people do develop PTSD symptoms within three months or so of that stressor event or series of stressor events, um, others may develop them you know, years later. Um, there has been one study that showed that some World War II veterans did not manifest PTSD for 30 years after their combat trauma. So don't think that if you're not experiencing those symptoms right after you depart from service that you, know, you don't necessarily qualify for that PTSD. Um, it's very common for service members to leave the military without significant symptoms, only to develop them months or years later. Um, and really, doctors don't really know why exactly this happens. In general, mental health is a condition that fluctuates. Um, so that is probably why it does take a certain uh, time, you know, to develop. But oftentimes, that can, you know, be triggered by a later stressor event that you have experienced maybe after leaving service. So definitely keep that in mind that you may be experiencing those symptoms, you know, years later, um, but can't quite understand, you know, the connection back to service. And it may be that you're just now having these symptoms manifest after experiencing that stressor event. Yes. And another reason may be that you cannot identify the stressor or a stressor, right? So we've established that a defining feature of PTSD is that it was triggered by a stressor. Again, PTSD is a mental health condition that some veterans develop after experiencing or witnessing a life-threatening event, uh, just like Naomi was just saying, or a combat situation, a natural disaster, or even sexual trauma or sexual assault. But what if you cannot identify that stressor? So you might find yourself experiencing all kinds of symptoms, but not being able to put your finger on that uh, on what's going on, right? So you may understand that, yes, this exists, but you don't know why. What is it? So maybe it's because... Um, it's about the people around you, or maybe it's your job, or maybe you're just stressed out. Maybe you have anxiety, um, or maybe you have OCD, uh, obsessive compulsive disorder, or maybe you have a borderline personality disorder, right? So PTSD in general can look a lot like all other mental health conditions, um, including depression, anxiety, again, OCD. But while PTSD share symptoms with these conditions, like the depression, anxiety, OCD, um, it is a distinct, a distinct diagnosis that developed in reaction to a traumatic event or a stressor, right? It is a distinct diagnosis that is developed in reaction to a traumatic event or stressor. So remember that the stressor does not need to be a devastating uh, event. So witnessing somebody else's trauma or let's say having major surgery during service, um, fearing imminent danger, or even if the danger doesn't uh, actually materialize you, and you're still fearing that imminent danger, that can actually cause PTSD as well. Everybody is different. Uh, what triggers, uh, triggers trauma 
triggers trauma. That's not easy to say. And one person not, uh, may not be the same for another person, right? So it is also important to know that just because you cannot remember a trauma or a specific stressor, it doesn't mean that it did not happen, right? Because in the wake of that traumatic event, your brain may detach from reality as a protective measure, but it doesn't mean that your mental health isn't still reeling from that event, okay? Yeah, and another potential thing that's been happening is maybe you're masking your symptoms, right? We're always kind of told, especially the veteran community, kind of, you know, stick through it, see it through. Um, and oftentimes, um, you don't really actually acknowledge those symptoms and maybe you're just, uh, you know, working through it or masking the symptoms. So um, we always talk about how maybe inside, maybe you're broken, but the world expects you to carry on. So you figure out ways to mask or drown out those symptoms. Um, it's very common um, for folks that struggle with PTSD to cope um, using um, other coping mechanisms. Um, the most prominent one that comes to mind is things like drinking. Um, consider these statistics from the Department of Veterans Affairs. So men with PTSD are two times more likely to abuse alcohol. And 60 to 80 percent of Vietnam veterans in treatment for PTSD struggle with alcohol abuse. Um, so this really speaks to the need, right, to cope with those mental health symptoms, right? There's coping, but there's also negative coping. Um, and drinking to drown out your PTSD symptoms is definitely an example of negative coping. Um, alcohol, for sure, isn't the only way folks, um, you know, tend to cope by numbing the pain. Um, but it's common for folks to turn to other addictions, things like gaming, maybe overworking, overeating, um, just to name a few, to negatively cope with those PTSD symptoms. What's going to be important is to know the common symptoms of PTSD um, so that you can understand maybe, you know, um, how that PTSD affects you, right, into your day to day. So just to name a few of those symptoms are things like intrusive memory. So this could be anything from flashbacks, nightmares, maybe some severe emotional, physical reaction to something that maybe triggers or reminds you of that specific um, in-service traumatic event. Um, perhaps having some negative thoughts about yourself or the future. Um, you know, having difficulty in preserving close relationships with families and friends. Um, and maybe as a result of that, you're feeling detached from people around you, detached from your family. Um, and maybe you're showing some irritability, some anger. Um, maybe you hold some strong feelings of guilt or shame. Um, you know, maybe have some sort of loss of interest in activities that once excited you um, prior to service. Um, or maybe you're not having any emotions at all. Maybe you're just flat or numb. Maybe you're shedding out those memories of the traumatic event. Um, maybe because of that, you're feeling like you're always on guard, um, you know, always looking out for that imminent danger, um, having behaviors um, that helps you cope with that fear, right? Um, maybe you're having some reckless behavior. So going back to the alcohol, maybe drinking too much, uh, maybe driving too fast, maybe driving under the influence. Um, another other two common symptoms are things like difficulty sleeping or maybe difficulty focusing. It's really important that if you do think that you have any of these PTSD symptoms that, you know, you reach out to your provider and get the help that you deserve, but also, um, you know, get the compensation that you deserve and legally are entitled to. Um, depending on the severity of your condition, right, you may be entitled to a PTSD rating up to 100%. Um, so the very first step would be if you're, you know, thinking you're having any of these symptoms is to start out by reaching out to your provider. Again, it doesn't matter if it's through the VA or through a private provider, just you know, just to see what's going on with those symptoms, to see if that, you know, fits within the criteria to be officially diagnosed. Um, you know, we all understand that thinking about mental health symptoms in general might be an uncomfortable conversation, uh, but it's important that when you do reach out to a provider that, you know, you don't downplay your symptoms or what we like to say, whitewash what you're going through, you know, tell them what, what's really going on. And, you know, if you do join the elite program uh, and you join our live classes, you'll hear us talk about being uncomfortably vulnerable, right? The importance of being uncomfortably vulnerable. Um, and the point we say, the reason why we really stress being uncomfortably vulnerable is that we really want you to be able to verbalize and advocate for your symptoms that you're having and really be able to, um, again, verbalize what your real reality is, um, what are the, the lifestyle changes and impacts those symptoms are having to you your day to day. Um, you know, it's, it's going to be important that you present all the evidence supporting your PTSD claim when, when filing the claim. And again, being comfortable vulnerable helps you practice and be able to be willing to be open and frank about your symptoms and how they're affecting you. And also, of course, how they're affecting the people around you. 
um, you know, the next best step after reaching out to your provider, getting that diagnosis, presenting all that evidence to support your PTSD claim is going to be also to request an independent medical opinion or an IMO um, or a nexus, um, a document, right, that's going to have an independent doctor coming in or a doctor giving their own opinion about the connection between your condition um, and how it relates back to service. So that's where they're going to talk about that in-service events or series of events um, that cause that traumatic um, response that manifested, right, to those mental health symptoms, that PTSD symptoms that you may be experiencing. Um, it's Your physician's wording should show that there's at least 50% chance that your condition was caused by an in-service stressor. So in other words, um, that it's at least likely or not that your condition has been caused by your service. Um, that's a criteria, that line that the VA is looking for, right, to, to see whether or not that fits within that uh, service connection criteria. Here at VA Claims Insider, we know what it takes, right? We know it takes courage to seek help for your PTSD, but we also know that you owe it to yourself and those around you to get that help. Um, you know, definitely be a help to yourself, right? Um, if you feel like you're going to need that support, definitely consider joining the ELITE program. Um, we're here to support you throughout this process, prepare you, provide those resources, um, and really be, you know, by your side and understanding that mental health in general, right? It's an uncomfortable topic, um, but you don't have to do that alone, right? You have the coaching team um, that's here to support you throughout the way and really um, get you comfortable enough to be your biggest advocate um, in terms of speaking about those symptoms. Absolutely. All right. Well, we are done with the topic, but not done with you at all. Of course, we do have another half hour. We are going to open it up to uh, question and answers as well here very shortly. Just wanted to recap real quickly. Um, don't forget, you know, what Naomi was uh, talking about earlier regarding our uh, you know, what we offer here at VA Claims Insider, this the SEM method that she mentioned earlier, strategy, education, medical evidence, one-on-one -on -one coaching. We meet with you. We have a strategy call. We get to know you. We start um, that claims process together, right? We educate you throughout the process. And uh, we do it with a lot of, uh, a lot of gratitude. We love helping veterans. This is something we truly do all um have in common here at VA Claims Insider. So if you need the help, if you would like to schedule a call with us, again, uh, vaclaimsinsider.com is our website. And then again, vaclaims.help. Um, if you would like to schedule a, a session, it is free. And then don't forget, if you know Brian Reese, I know many of you do, our wonderful founder of VA Claims Insider. His book is out. It is called You Deserve It. It's the second edition out now. And you can actually order that book on Amazon.com or Amazon. Um, so again, if you want to learn more, schedule a free discovery call and talk to one of our team members, uh, vaclaims.help. And uh, we are open for your questions now. We appreciate you being with us thus far. So thank you again. And um here we go. We have, uh, I do see we have some comments that were made. All right, let's see here. I'm going to pick one. We have many, many comments. I love that. So, uh, Laura, I get migraines due to PTSD and medication, but I don't have proof. Hi, Laura, and thank you for your comment, and uh, thank you for your service as well. So the first thing that you want to do, just like we mentioned earlier regarding PTSD, mental health in general, is to start um, reaching out to your doctor, right? If one veteran or someone is suffering from a condition, regardless of what it is, migraine, sleep apnea, back problems, um, hypertension, whatever that may be, you want to start discussing that with your doctor because you want to start accumulating evidence, medical evidence, that will then eventually support the fact that your migraines are caused by your PTSD, your mental health, right? You need to establish that link. We call that the nexus. The next, or a better word for nexus is link or connection. So you would need a medical provider that states, hey, I've evaluated Laura. She's suffering from migraines. In my opinion, her migraines are caused by her service-connected uh, PTSD. And that's how you establish the connection between one and the other. But first and foremost, if um, 
you don't know this, the VA will not accept a claim unless the condition that you are claiming is officially diagnosed by a medical provider. So definitely want to seek that first. That's where you want to start, Laura. I hope that answered your question. Yeah. Um, another question I saw in the chat was, and was from Nick. Um, can you have a PTSD rating if you have an anxiety claim? Was told that they fall within the same category, similarly to how sleep apnea and respiratory illnesses. So, yes. So PTSD rating, um, you cannot have two separate ratings. What the VA does is that they will combine all of your symptoms criteria and rate you for all mental health under one rating. So let's say, for example, if you already were service connected for anxiety, but now you feel like you're experiencing some sort of additional PTSD symptoms, what you would want to do is, let's say, if you are service connected, you want to fall for an increase and really speak on the worsening of those symptoms, really focus on what those symptoms are, provide examples. And then that increase, if should it be warranted, would be uh, rated under one rated, we will list the anxiety with PTSD. Um, so you won't get one just for PTSD, another one for anxiety. Hope that answered your question. All right. Here's another question from Todd Allen. I suffer from combat PTSD and have started to get treatment through the VA. But when do I know to ask for a rating? Does my VA provider provide the PTSD rating? Um, hi, Todd, and welcome. Uh, so... Absolutely, you're doing the right thing. Just like I mentioned early on in our conversation, seeking the treatment, uh, that's where you want to start, which you're doing the, the right thing. So good, good for that. Good on you for that. Um, when do you ask for a rating? So you need to be diagnosed with that condition, right? You need to be diagnosed with PTSD by the VA or by a medical um, psychologist, a board certified psychologist that establishes that diagnosis. Once you have that diagnosis, now what you need to do is you need to establish again that link between the PTSD and service because of course the VA compensates veterans for conditions, injuries that occurred during service, active duty. So once you establish that diagnosis, then I'm not sure if you have a coach, uh, if you are here with us at VA Claims Insider, but that would be a good start. Um, to sign up with us, and then we can coach you through the process from there forward. The question that you had related to, does your VA, pro, uh, VA provider um, provide that rating? No, they do not. You are now going to the medical facility. Um, the benefits, the you know side, if you will, if you will, the VA benefits side is who eventually will establish that rating if the VA feels that indeed that PTSD is service related. But again, remember you need to establish the correlation between PTSD and um, service. We here at VA Claims Insider, um, as we mentioned earlier, do refer you to a preferred ne a network of providers who can provide medical evidence to support your claims. Uh, they provide psych evaluations and also medical nexus letters. So if you do engage with us, uh, if you haven't already, we'll definitely discuss that further with you. Yeah, uh, I see that Max asked, can you recap the symptoms, please? And yeah, for sure. Let's go over those symptoms again. So most common uh, symptoms of PTSD are often intrusive memories. Those can look like flashbacks, nightmares, severe emotional or physical reaction to something that reminds you of that specific traumatic event, um, maybe having negative thoughts about yourself or the future, um, having difficulty preserving close relationship with families and friends, maybe as a result of that, you're feeling detached from the people around you, um, being irritable or having anger, uh, sh having strong feelings of guilt or shame, um, having a loss of interest in the activity that you once um, you know, enjoyed before, uh, feeling emotionally flat or numb, um, shutting out memories of the traumatic events, or feeling like you're always on guard um, against some sort of imminent danger, um, experiencing or displaying, I should say, reckless behavior. So things like drinking too much, drinking too fast, drinking under the influence, um, having maybe difficulty sleeping or focusing. Those are just the <clears throat> common ones um, of that for PTSD. So thank you so much for asking for that recap there. Thanks, Naomi. 
Uh, we have a question from Luis Gallegos. I filed a claim for depression secondary to cancer. Uh, currently waiting for the CMP exam, again, the compensation and pension exam, uh, and rating. I just been diagnosed with PTSD. Can I file an increase for mental health when I get that rating? So um, again, I think we touched upon this, or Naomi just did, uh, PTSD, depression, anxiety, um, all those conditions, if you will, fall under the same umbrella for the VA, right? So PTSD is rated from one, uh, zero to 100. So is depression. So is anxiety. Um, so the VA rates mental health in increments of 0, 10, 30%, 50%, 70%, and 100%. So eventually... Um, if you do get rated for the depression, which you've already submitted for, I would wait for the uh, decision that comes back on that. Because you have PTSD, um, again, the VA rates mental health as a whole, right? So will it in, um, help increasing that rating? It can. Um, however, in my opinion, I would wait to see what your outcome is first because it may be a great rating. And you're you're fine with that, right? So um, that's how you know that's how I would do that. Yeah, gotcha. Uh, we have many comments. Uh, let me see here. I see another question here by Nick. Um, when I put in a claim for combat PTSD, they deny me for combat PTSD, but instead of awarding me a rating for anxiety that I never applied for, what was my combat PTSD denied? Um, so this is actually a really good question. So I'm glad you asked this. So, um, yes, oftentimes um, when you go to file the claim, let's say you have the intention of filing for PTSD, you file with all the evidence. Maybe you have an IMO. Maybe it's, um, you know, records of you getting treated through the VA um, and you go into that CMP exam. Of course, the evaluator is going to take notes um, based off that, you know, interaction. But at the end of the day, the ones that are going to have that final say as to, you know, service connection and also what you're going to be rated for. Um, it's also going to be it's going to be up to the adjudicator, right? So it may very well be that in your own opinion, right, about your symptoms. Yep, I have PTSD. It's only PTSD symptoms. But when it, you know all the notes and all the evidence goes to the adjudicator and they're reviewing, they say, okay, yeah, I do see that there is some PTSD symptoms, but the most prominent condition out of the two is anxiety. Um, so I'm regarding service connect you for anxiety. So I wouldn't get too hung up specifically on the condition that you're rated for. Like like we said previously, um, all mental health conditions are rated under one umbrella. So the fact that you were service connected for it, it's a big win, right? Um, don't get too hung up on that it's anxiety or not PTSD because at the end of the day, um, they're compensating you for the severity and frequency of those symptoms. So don't think that they're not compensating you for those PTSD symptoms because they are. They're factoring the severity and the frequency. It's just so much very, may, may, may be that they're saying, yep, at one point you have PTSD, but now it has progressed and now it's much more of an anxiety condition, not necessarily PTSD. Thank you so much for that question. It's very, you know, a common question that folks yes, ask. Absolutely. All right, Joseph Bryant, we have a question here. It says, a couple times you mentioned elite. Are there levels of your commitment to us? And if so, what are they? That is a great question, right? Because we do talk about the elite uh, program, the elite membership. So um, are there different levels of how we treat our veterans? Absolutely not. All uh, the, the, mo the, the common denominator of how we treat our, our veterans is all... Um, the same, right? We, we, we love you all. We're extremely grateful for the service um, that you, you served for us, for this country. So the elite program is when you get uh, connected with VA Claims Insider, you get a coach like myself or Naomi, and there are many others as well within our organization. And once you establish um, the, the the connection with us and you become a member, we call you an elite member, right? So you will receive with that membership one-on-one -on -one coaching. So you have a coach like myself or Naomi that you meet up with throughout that process and um, that educates you through the claims process. So elite is a term that we use dearly. Um, it's something that 
I'm actually not sure if we, you know, we've, we've said, but anyway, it's, it's a great acronym for what we stand for here at VA Claims Insider. And so um, there is another program that we do offer. And uh, if you want to learn more about that program as well, you're more than welcome to reach out to us. That program is um, different than the elite. And what it does is you do not get a coach, but you do get the resources that everyone else has uh, available to them. But the only difference is that um, you don't have a one-on-one -on -one coach relationship. That program is called Mastery. So if you wanted to look into that, uh, you're welcome to, yeah, to see uh, baclaimsinsider.com, our website. A lot of great information on there. Thanks for your question, Joe. For sure. <clears throat> Yeah, I just wanted to touch base that that elite acronym is basically um, our core values, right? So the E stands for empathy, the L is for learning, I is for integrity, T is for teamwork. Um, it's our core values that drives the way we do things here at VACI. Um, definitely, definitely recommend logging into VAClaimsInsider.com, checking out, you know, who we are, what our core values are, and, and kind of what our goal is. If you want to learn more about, you know, who we are, and what makes us different, for sure. Um, I did see a question in the chat that I wanted to respond to. Um, I see Michael said, can 100% PNT P PTSD be reduced if the condition is static? So oftentimes when you're 100% PNT, that means as long as you don't touch any of your claims or file any additional claims, the VA will not call you to get reevaluated for any means necessary. So once you get that 100% PNT, if you leave it as is, none of your conditions will be reduced or we will, you'll be called in for that another cmp exam to get evaluated it's not until you file a new claim or that opens the window or opens the door for the va to call you in to get reevaluated. so if you have that 100 percent pnt status you're, you're good you're gold let's keep it there um definitely unless you have you know you don't have any other claims to file you'll, you should be good to go indeed and we say that a lot, do not, if you're at 100% permanent total, the VA has established that you are permanently and totally disabled, right? So once you reach that 100%, there is no, you know, 105 or 150, you, the max disability that you can receive from the VA for a disability compensation is 100%. Um, I have a question here from Adrian. It says, I recently filed a claim for sleep apnea secondary to depression. Do I need a nexus letter? Well, more than likely, yes, Adrian, because you need, well, not you, a medical provider needs to establish the link between those two conditions, right? So a um, medical provider will look at and evaluate your, your medical records. And if they truly believe that there is a correlation between the sleep apnea and the, the depression. They will provide you with a document stating, stating that exactly that there is a correlation between the two, right? So that is called the nexus. Again, that means the link or the connection between one condition and another. And more than likely, yes, you would need to establish um, the nexus where a medical provider will need to establish that. In return, the VA will then now accept that claim because the connection has been established. Again, VA Claims Insider, we do offer those teams of preferred uh, medical providers that you have access to as an elite member at discounted prices. So if you are interested, again, please uh, go to our website, vaclaimsinsider.com, or you can also um, uh, schedule a discovery call with us for free. And there's the information right there uh, at the bottom of our screen. <laughs> yeah, I, I wanted to respond to Laura. Um, she said the real question is how much does your help cost, right? And that's an important question. You want to make sure you know what you're getting yourself into. So here to let you know any work that we do um, prior to getting you a win. So that means strategy calls of reviewing any document building strategy um, preparing the claim with you alongside you prepping you for those cmp exams all of that work that we do with you is completely free of charge um, the only time that we would get compensated here at vaci is if we were able to get you a win so 
I always use the example, let's say you come into VACI um, with a monthly compensation from the VA at $100. $100 um, and then after the work that we do, we put in a couple claims, we bump you up to $200. We will take that difference of 100 and multiply it by six. And that's going to be the total invoice amount that you will receive by us. Um, you do have two different payment options to take care of that. Let's say if you want to do a lump sum, we do shave off 10% of that invoice. Um, or you have 12 month interest free payments um, that you can set up with the accounting team. And the really cool thing about that is that, you know, once you're, you have some sort of uh, payment plan in place, if you want to continue moving forward with your claims, um, you're more, more than happy to continue, you know, moving on to the, to the next claim. Um, so definitely we're equally as invested um, in your claim journey, right? We don't get compensated unless we get you that win. Um, so definitely, definitely, um, I would say just start off by giving that discovery call, just seeing, you know, ask those questions, see how we could potentially help you um, and give us a try and see, you know, um, where we get you. We're here to definitely, um, you know, give you that rating that you are definitely entitled and deserve. Um, and we're here to help you get that. There's another question here by James Morris. I was awarded 10 percent for PTSD in 2010 and then in 2012. I believe it was taken away several reasons been for several reasons and you've been fighting ever since uh on my own until 2022 so i'm not sure if you've uh gotten there yet james or if you know if that was eventually increased however um that's unfortunate right but there's definitely ways to keep fighting and you want to keep fighting because if you you know, if you truly are suffering from that condition of PTSD, um, you want to get with your medical providers and continued, uh, continue care. So show the VA that you are still suffering from that condition, um, regardless of if the, um, you know, the, uh, the medical uh, provider is via VA or not, or if it's just a personal provider, medical evidence is medical evidence and it is accepted by the va so you want to engage with a medical provider a psychologist so that you can start accumulating that evidence to show the va look i am still suffering from this condition i'm not sure if you are um, an elite member with us here at va claims insider however again the um telemedica team that we talk about a lot as well. They also provide um, psych evaluations. So if you ever met with a psychologist and uh, you know you interact with them, they can provide you documentation to support that that condition indeed is still um, warranted if it is indeed, right? So um, my suggestion is continue uh, your medical care for that PTSD, accumulate that evidence to support the um, the increase. Yeah, Sandra, you mentioned evidence, right? And it definitely um, goes back to this question on the chat from Max. What is the real definition of an IMO? So an IMO is an independent medical opinion. Um, and it's one of those uh, documents of forms of evidence um, that typically um, comes as a result of having a mental health evaluation. Let's say, should you do your eval through our preferred network through Telemedica, um, a couple of things that the IMO document will contain is, you know, one, that diagnosis. So is it PTSD? Is it depression? Um, they'll go ahead and diagnose you, but also speak about uh, symptoms that you're experiencing, severity and frequency of symptoms, which is very important within that, you know, mental health criteria with the VA. Um, but also, right, uh, a built-in nexus statement. How does this condition, um, these symptoms connect back to service? Is it an in-service event? Is it a series of events? Um, definitely want to make sure that you make that clear to the VA, um, that connection back to service. And that's typically um, an IMO document. You know, that's the purpose that they serve. So an IMO is an independent medical opinion, just to answer your question. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So here's another uh, couple, let me see here. A couple questions I wanted to address. They're very short. Uh, Kevin Miller, how do I get you all to look at my things or my, uh, you know, your stuff, if you will, um, go ahead and sign up, go ahead and, uh, go to our website, vaclaimsinsider.com or, um, there's your, if you see on the banner, if you're still here, just go ahead and you can get started with a free call, uh, or get started with us as well. Vaclaimsinsider.com forward slash 
Elite or there again, VA Claims Insider dot help, H-E-L-P. That's how you can get started. Once you establish a relationship with your um, coach, Kevin, then they will definitely look at all of your evidence to uh, create a strategy and move forward um, on the best path for you both, um, for you through the claims process. The other question was, I have sleep apnea at 50%. This is Lolita Woodward. Um, you have 50% rating at uh, for sleep apnea currently. Can I file PTSD as a secondary? So Lolita, as we were talking about earlier, PTSD is more in, you know, more related to a traumatic event that occurred in service or a stressor, right? You see, witnessing um, a car accident, having major surgery during, um, during service, combat related. In my opinion, if you are suffering from sleep apnea and it is impacting on your lifestyle in general, so meaning it is, you know, you're different now than you were before because of the sleep apnea and it is causing you maybe to be depressed or have anxiety, in my opinion, I would say possibly looking at a mental health claim as a secondary to the sleep apnea rather than specifically PTSD. And remember, a psychologist will be the ultimate um, provider, if you will, that determines that diagnosis. So we can't ourselves, unless we are psychologists, auto-diagnose um, ourselves. So instead of saying, I, I'm going to file for PTSD because I have it, in my opinion, would be obviously reach out to that provider, reach out to a psychologist, um, VA or non-VA, whoever it may be. If you're suffering from depression, anxiety, you feel you have those symptoms that Naomi uh, mentioned earlier of PTSD, absolutely reach out. If your sleep apnea is causing any type of uh, depression or anxiety, insomnia, lack of sleeping because of it, that also is considered one of the symptoms of mental health, then you can, yes. Yeah. But remember, you need a diagnosis first, right? You need a diagnosis for that mental health condition always. Yep. And that's the very first step. That's what we always say. Get your butt to the doctors if you haven't. Have a better understanding of your conditions, of your symptoms. Um, that is the very first step, um, whether you decide to continue this claim journey on your own but, or with VACI. Um, a diagnosis is the very first starting point for sure. Um, I did want to answer Robert Harris's question here. During the CMP, do you give up evidence? So the CMP exam is something that happens post submission. So any evidence that you want the VA to review or to take into account with your claim should be submitted when you go to file the claim. Um, when you go into a CMP exam, the evaluator is not required to accept any evidence. Um, so just think, just know that if you go in there with any additional evidence, it's not going to be considered as part of the claim. So it's very important that you gather, prepare a fully developed claim, have all your evidence, all your ducks in a row, upload it correctly when you're filing the claim so that all of that can be evaluated. And what the CMP is, it's an administrative um, exam, right, where they're going to ask follow up questions based on what you submitted. So what about those symptoms that you that, that you submitted? Can you provide examples of what that looks like day to day? Um, maybe if they have any, you know, any questions to follow up, they'll ask you that, but it's not the opportunity or the time, I should say, for you to provide any additional evidence. Exactly. All right, we do have another five minutes. Um, great questions. This is wonderful because as we read these questions, maybe those questions are related to someone else or that, you know, answering for others that are here with us today. So thank you for all your questions. I do see here a question, a question from Michael uh, Sukowski um, for diagnosis letters and still denied. So what we were talking about earlier, Michael, again, the, the those diagnoses and, and, and you, that's the start, right? The diagnosis is definitely the start. You need that in order to submit your claim. However, I'm not sure if you're going in for secondaries or, or service related but the link to service needs to be established for those diagnoses that you have. So let's say one of those diagnoses is depression. Well, you need to establish that the depression 
is directly related to service or it's directly related to another condition that you are service connected for. So again, that nexus that we talk about, which means the link between one and the other, is um, necessary for the VA to accept that claim. So a medical provider or a psychologist, board certified psychologist um, that provides the link or the connection between one and the other is necessary for you to file that claim. And I see Max Archer says, uh, after you commented, he said, you need VA Claims Insider to connect those diagnoses to service. And, and thank you, Max, that is exactly true, right? Um, that, that is what we are here for, the education, so that you don't continue fighting with the VA and continually get denied because of the lack of, you know, what documents do I need? What documents um, are, you know, necessary for me to move forward? So having a coach like myself and Naomi is extremely important. We would love to have you. We would love to, to um, serve you throughout this process. So go ahead and um, if you'd like to join us, again, it's free. Uh, you don't pay anything at all uh, unless, you know, we move forward and you get that increase that you do deserve which is a celebration for us, for us all, life, life-changing life celebrations. Um, we talk about that amongst all coaches all the time when, when we actually uh, have a veteran who goes from 20 to 80 or 10 to 50 or even 50 to 100, regardless of that increase, we all celebrate uh, you know, amongst each other throughout the coaches because it's a really wonderful thing. It is life-changing. So, um, yeah, we have a couple more minutes. Naomi, if you want to pick another one. Yeah, I think this is a good uh, last question here. Uh, Max said, should I be happy with 90% and wait a few years before adding TPI, ED, and migraine, et cetera, to my claim? Um, I think that this is a question that you should ask yourself. Do you feel like your 90% is a rating that you deserve? Um, do you feel like that is fully encompassing your conditions, your situation right now? And if not, then uh, no, right? Keep, keep pushing forward. Um, do the discovery call, see what we can do for you. Um, we, we're here to get you, you know, the, the rating that you deserve. We always say you serve, you deserve, and we really mean that. So if you are dealing with real, um, you know, um, conditions as a result of service that you're not properly getting um, compensated for and you feel like you should, the very first step is scheduling that discovery call, understanding what your possible options are in terms of claim wise and what we can do for you. And, you know, having that strategy call with your coach um, to build a game plan to get you, you know, to that 100% if that's your goal um, or to get you that TBI or migraine claim service connected. So definitely, you know, it's a question within yourselves that you have to ask. Am I receiving the compensation that I deserve due to the conditions that I'm dealing with now day to day? Um, and if, if that answer is no, then the very first step is, you know, schedule that discovery call. See what we can do for you for sure. Absolutely. I totally agree. Well, I think we have time for one more, possibly. Let's see here. Robert L. Harris, is being a victim of hazing considered a mental issue? So um, if you truly believe, Robert, that that hazing, that unfortunate uh, incident that occurred, caused you to suffer from anxiety or depression or hypervigilance um, or any of the symptoms under the umbrella of the mental health um, rating, if you will, and you truly believe that that incident um, affected you then and throughout, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> throughout life, then yes, you know, it, it can be considered a mental health issue. I actually um, have seen that more than once in my uh, workings with other veterans who were victims of um, similar incidents and saying that did qualify for mental health. I mean, it is a traumatic event. So if you feel that that did indeed affect you in your life, Robert, back then to this day, my suggestion again is seek help, talk about it. It's not easy to talk about these things because you're resurfacing you know, feelings and, and symptoms that maybe you have been suppressing for a long time. But in order to be compensated, you want to shed that armor that you were always taught to, to hold on to and not, you know, like we said earlier, 
Um, you don't want to be weak. You don't want to talk about it. You're suppressing it. This is not the time to do that. If you are suffering, absolutely seek for help in general. If you are suffering in general, seek for help. Mental health is a huge, um, unfortunately, uh, condition that uh, affects many, many veterans. Um, nothing to be embarrassed about. Absolutely seek help for you, your family, your well-being, because that is extremely important to, to us and, and in general, your, your family and yourself. All right. We are at the top of the hour. Um, thank you again, everyone. Thank you, Naomi, for being here with me today. It's been a pleasure. Thank you all uh, that joined us today for your service. Again, if you want to uh, join us, it would be a great honor for us to do so. So check us out, okay? <laughs> Have a wonderful remainder of your week. Be safe and thank you again. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a great one.